In this video, I'll be showing how to use JV's Mesh Player. With this plugin, you can animate your meshes and export the animation to script for your scripted VFX. It's, it's super easy and the best method I found out. So first, download JV's Mesh Player from the Creator Store or from the link in the description. And you're going to make a new experience right here. Then when it loads, click on Plugins, Manage Plugins and then enable JV's Mesh Player. And then now when you head to the Plugins tab, you're going to see it right here. It doesn't do anything when you toggle it, but you should be seeing the icon right now. Now you're going to want some meshes that you're going to be tweening. So for me, I made a model right here that you can find in the description also. For this tutorial, it has all the scripts and meshes that I'll be using in this tutorial to actually show what the plugin does. So here it is. You can also find a ton of meshes in VFX Studio right here in the Meshes tab. Just a ton of them. And there's also a bunch in the toolbox. Just search up like VFX meshes or something in the Creator Store. If you're using the model I put, don't worry about the scripts yet and just ungroup the model with Control U like that. And now I'll be starting with the explosion mesh that I use for my Lanza VFX over here. So with the explosion mesh selected, and the mesh player actually on right here, you're going to see emit, edit, and export. For now, you're going to click on edit and this menu will pop up. And now you can use R to cycle between move, rotate, and size. I'll choose size and it's literally the same thing as studio. I just make it explode outwards by increasing the size upwards like this to like 30 right here. And you'll see a transparent mesh show up so you can easily see what the last keyframe is. Now I'll click stop editing and emit and you'll see it just tween upwards exactly like how you put it in the mesh player. Now with that, I'm going to go back to edit and continue sizing it like this, all 30 on each side. You'll see it's offset from where it started, which is bad for an explosion like this. So you can either move it by cycling to move and just recentering it, or you can change the values directly in the menu in offset. So I'll just turn everything to zero, zero, zero. So it's all nice and centered like this. And then now I'll move it up a little and then hit stop editing and then emit. Now it looks pretty bad right now, but what I do for most of my meshes is just go back to edit and change the easy style to exponential. And now if I stop editing, it's going to look a little better just like that. Then make sure it fades out by going back to edit, setting the transparency to one and that's it. It should look pretty good. Just a really small explosion, super simple like that. This is the simplest and easiest way to tween a mesh for your VFX. You can of course change the time so it lasts longer. You can change the rotation so it has a little spin to it when it's animating. And you can even change the starting mesh to be super small so then it looks a little better like this. Boom. And then when you click on it, it's going to do the exact same thing like that. Mm -hmm. Now with the explosion mesh done right here, I'll be heading to shockwave over here and be doing the exact same thing as I did to the explosion. So I'll set the size higher for all of them, just to 35 from the input. And then I'll offset it with R here. And then I'll scale it even higher so it looks cooler. And then I'll set the time to two, easy style exponential, and then transparency to one. And I even add a little rotation so it looks cooler like this. So that should be fine. And I'm gonna click stop editing and emit. You see, you do the exact same thing. Of course, you can scale this down. You can do it however way you want, just like doing this. And I'll go back to edit, change it to bounce right here. And then I'll emit again. And you see, you do this. Super easy with the bounce and everything. So be really quick. Now with the shockwave done, I'm gonna head over to Spiral over here and click 
hit it again. For this one, you'll see there are keyframes you can add to it. I'll go through all those steps again. You make it bigger on the size, the time up, transparency. This time I use the elastic. And then actually put on five. And now with that, huge disclaimer, if you click edit before you scale down the actual mesh, it'll save the original size. It'll save this size right here that the mesh was on before clicking edit. So when I emit it, it would just go back to the original size without having to do anything. Going on, I just changed the rotation. Oh, upside down, that's fine. And like this, it should be fine. And then now I'll be adding a new keyframe right here. I'll make it 10 seconds. This right there, the second keyframe. And then I'll just make it shrink down and disappear back to zero, zero, zero. And then this one, transparency also zero. So then you can have really nice effect. And I'll be using, yeah, elastic. And I'll hit emit. And you see this, it finishes the first one. And then it goes to the next keyframe, just like that. Lifetime, I don't know, you can make it like lower. You could change the rotation and everything, but you can be super creative with this. See how it does that really nice effect? That's keyframe one. And then it going back down is the second keyframe. Super simple, just like animating any normal animation with the r6 character and a bunch of other stuff obviously it doesn't have to shrink back down to how i'm doing it but there's a ton of other ways you can do this there's so much stuff you can do with this and it's, it's so insanely helpful when you're getting started learning vfx so you don't have to guess through the code what you're tweening or what you're doing so this is a really awesome plugin it gives you a super nice visual for the mesh you're tweening which is one of the best parts. Now, hopefully you're familiar with a little bit of scripting, like from one of my tutorials, but I made this as simple as possible. So if you're using the kit, you see I got three scripts right here, but feel free to copy the code or download or use your own code, it doesn't matter. First, place VFX input in the starter pack right here. Then you're gonna go to replicated storage, make a new folder, call it modules and then you're just going to put the two purple scripts in modules now that we got the scripts here in starter pack with vfx input all it does is check if you click one on your keyboard to actually play the vfx and then in modules we got vfx module right here and this is where you're actually going to play your track or vfx all you need is these two scripts super simple we got the services module and the check same thing here, services, module, and the track. Now head back to the workspace right here. You're going to go back to replicated storage, make a new folder called meshes right here. And then all the meshes that you animated, or if you made more than I did, I used explosion, shockwave, and spiral. I'm going to just put these inside here in meshes. You can see you can still emit them from outside. I'll get all of them at the same time. So with this, you're going to make a new part where you want the actual VFX to spawn. I'll make it here. Just name it VFX spawn right here. Boom, make it transparent. Make sure to anchor it. You can't collide, can't touch. This is normal stuff right here. Mm -hmm. Put it anywhere you want. I'll just be putting it next to spawn. Now I delete the meshes I didn't use to just clean up a little and then and now with all that set up, all you have to do is go to VFX module and here's where you'll be calling your track and the play mesh function. So your VFX can actually play. All right, now head back to the workspace and click on the mesh you're gonna want to be uh, scripting. So for now, I choose the explosion right here. And then now make sure to focus in on it. You can see it's right here, explosion. I'm gonna hit export and then inside the exported Thing right here this one right here is useless the parent it doesn't do anything but what's super important is what's inside the child right here it's gonna be explosion track because it's the track of the explosion like the animation so 
And now all you're going to do, you can make a new folder if you want. You can just throw it inside replicated storage, but it's going to be folder. I'll be making a folder. It's going to be tracks, explosion track. Just move it over here and then delete whatever this is. You don't need that right now. Now everything is properly set up. We got the tracks, we got the meshes, and we got the module and the scripting. All super easy. All you're going to need to do is write one line of code and just change where your track is. So here, the explosion track is in tracks. So replicated storage dot tracks. So just do that. And then explosion track. Make sure to use require because it'll break if you don't. So we got that. Now with the track properly referenced, all you're going to do is go VFX help dot play mesh. That's all you need. And then it's going to say what you need. So first we need the track that's referenced on the top. The mesh you're going to be using, which is in replicated storage. So RS dot meshes and then explosion, which is a mesh I animated that one on. You can use any mesh that the animation will save. And then we got position, which is in right here, VFX spawn. Probably already made it. So I'll do workspace dot VFX spawn dot position. And then we're going to go finally, just the parent super easy. I just make it workspace. Now I'll be heading to workspace. Now you can click play. It's loading up. And then when you click one on your keyboard right here, you're going to see the mesh. Super easy, super nice, doesn't have no collision or nothing, but easiest way to play VFX meshes and easiest way to make them too. It seems insane. I shouldn't have any problems as long as you reference everything correctly. You shouldn't be having to do any debugging at all. Just make sure you follow it and just make sure you're good. Now with that one up, we still have the other ones to add. I won't be adding anymore. I'll just be replacing them. So we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to go to spiral instead. My export. We're going to go up here. And inside the exported animation code, just change this to spiral wrap or whatever you named yours. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. We go track, VFX module, and then inside tracks, we just change it to spiral track. And then something cool. This is a different track, but it's using a different mesh. So when I click play right here, it's going to use a different track, but the same mesh. So you see right here, it does a spiral track where it comes out like that and then does the second keyframe and then it goes out. So super flexible, super nice. You can do a bunch of stuff with this. You don't have to make a bajillion different tracks for a bunch of different VFX. You can just use the same one. So it's pretty nice. Again. So then here, of course, it works vice versa. So you can do a different mesh and then use, I'll use spiral here. And then I'll use the explosion one. And then now instead, spiral is going to be doing the explosion track right here. You see? Super simple. Super nice. Now one last thing you can do if you really uh, don't like using the plugin or want to stick with the traditional way you can still you can go inside the actual track and change however you want so we're gonna go here all this isn't important i don't use that but right here this is like the actual code that it exports so let's say explosion you didn't want to use the plugin you can just do this copy it paste it second keyframe you can change the size color everything i just change it red Nah, never mind. It's fine. 200. I just do that. And then we're gonna go size. I just changed to like 500 or something. 290, 300, uh, five seconds. And then if you go back to the module using track, using spiral, you go back, you click play. It's gonna do that second keyframe after the first one. Check it. Like this. And. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. The transparency is set to one on the first keyframe, so you couldn't see the second one. Yeah. Right, just change that back to zero. Then go here, and boom. Just like that. 
So you can change it from code, you can change it from anywhere, you can add a bunch of keyframes, you can do it from the plugin, a bunch of options for this. But that's mostly everything about the plugin. It's super nice, I really like this plugin, I still use it for all my meshes, since I don't know how to make super complicated ones, like mesh flipbooks, like, leave it as that. But this is pretty good right now. Mm -hmm. Super easy alternative. You don't even have to script, just call it like this. But that's everything for this plugin. Of course, this plugin is super awesome and I've been using it for a while and wanted to show it off since there's not a lot of tutorials on mesh tweeting at all. And they're usually super insanely simple and you don't even get to see what you're making. But hopefully this plugin helps a lot or this tutorial helps a lot. Super versatile, you can use it in a bunch of ways. This is just the absolute easiest to get your meshes tweening and playing. You can do a lot more with it if you're good or working on a game or something. Hopefully this video helped. I tried to make it as simple as possible so anyone could use it. I have more plugins and meshes. Uh, now more plugins to show, more tutorials to make. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this helped. And I'll see you guys next time.